Let's talk about the Tennessee Titans because this team made two major moves today by bringing in Lloyd Cushenberry, who's a top center in the NFL from the Denver Broncos, and you bring in Tony Pollard as well, who is a very good running back from Dallas Cowboys. You had to upgrade the offensive line. Peter Skaronski was the best offensive lineman with this team last season, and he was a rookie. The rest of the offensive line was not good. In the first round, I don't care if Marvin Harrison Jr. is on the board. This wide receiving class is so deep. You take an offensive lineman, whether it's Joe Alt or Olu, you take one of those offensive linemen and you help build this thing with Will Levis. You give this kid a fighting chance because I've seen it over and over again through other guys' career when they're young quarterbacks. Teams will go out there, they'll get the premier wide receiver, they'll get the premier running back, but the trenches are not good enough. Will Levis can be a franchise quarterback with the Tennessee Titans. Now, I'm not saying that he will be. I'm not saying that he's going to go out there, he's going to lead this team to the Super Bowl in the next four to five years. But he has very good potential with this team. I go back to the game that he had against the Atlanta Falcons. Four passing touchdowns. And some people say you can't use that game because it was his first game in. And the NFL defensive coaches, they did not have tape on him. Okay, let's use the, Minnes- let's use the Miami Dolphins game. He looked very good in that game. He outplayed Tua Tagovailoa in that game, and he was dealing with pressure all day long. He's a big, strong quarterback that can get the ball deep down the field to weapons like DeAndre Hopkins and to Traylon Burks as well. I like Traylon Burks a lot. If you listen to the channel for the last couple of years, I think that he has that high upside potential. The problem is this kid, he can't stay healthy. That's the biggest thing with this kid, man. Dealt with the turf toe injury his rookie season. This season, he wasn't having the best season. Ryan Tannehill was not the same quarterback. And he was put into a bad situation because of the horrible offensive play calling. But the concussion he suffered against the Steelers. He missed extended time after that game. I really want to see what Traylon Burst can do at the next level. But this seems like one of those situations. If this kid can't stay healthy, he may not have a long-term future with the Tennessee Titans. But I'm not going to give up on him just yet. He has those big play abilities to go deep down the field and make some plays for you. He's a big physical wide receiver, and I hope that he can pan out with this team because that'll be a great story. This team essentially traded A.J. Brown to go get Traylon Burks to be his replacement, and that has not worked out just yet. DeAndre Hopkins is still the number one wide receiver in the NFL to me, a very good veteran. Just go down there, get separation, and just still a very good wide receiver. He's not the same DeAndre Hopkins that he was when he was with the Houston Texans, and he's dropped off a bit since he was with the Arizona the Cardinals, but he is still a very good wide receiver to have around, and he can mentor these guys as well. You do need more wide receiving help. Just because I'm a big fan of Traylon Burks, I'm not saying this kid's a true number one or even a true number two wide receiver. The health has been a huge question mark and he hasn't been consistent either. A lot of that has been due to horrible quarterback play and due to horrible offensive play calling as well. But he has to step up. I don't want to see this kid be a bust. You have a very good playmaking tight end that I like a lot as well. And Chigga Kongwu, I think that he could be a very good playmaking tight end long term with this team. Nick Westbrook Akine is a good number three wide receiver, good number four wide receiver. They do need more wide receiving help and they can get that later on in the NFL draft, but you have to solidify this offensive line. Bring in Lord Cushenberry. That's phenomenal. You already have Peter Skaronski as well. You go out there, you get another tackle. That is three positions now that you can work on that offensive line and you're halfway covered at that point. I think that you'll be in an amazing situation if you get those trenches resolved and you help out Will Levis as much as possible. Now, when you look at the running backs of this team, Derrick Henry would not be with this team anymore. There's a chance that he can come back, but you just signed Tony Pollard. You have Tajay Spears, who was a very good running back with this team last season. A very good playmaking running back. Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears are kind of the same running back in terms of playing style. They're both slender build type of running backs. They do have some muscle on them, but not power backs. You can see the Tennessee team, Tennessee Titans possibly getting a power back for the rest of free agency, or they try to get a guy late in the NFL draft. But I like the move against Tony Pollard. Over a 1,000 yards rushing, he's a guy that is playing at his best when he can bounce off someone. So hopefully Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard can bounce off each other, and they can be some very good dynamic playmakers for Will Levis. And that's one thing I'm looking at right now. They fit, they fit what Coach Callahan wants at the running back position. You have a strong arm quarterback in Will Levis. And you have some top wide receivers, possibly if Traylon Burst can pan out with DeAndre Hopkins. So the offense could be solidified, in my opinion. You look at the defense. The defense last season was a bit interesting. Harold Landry missed all of the season before dealing with a torn ACL. He came back this season and he looked very good. I think that Harold Landry is a top pass rusher in 
the conference in the AFC, 10 and a half sacks on the season. He looked very good. Jeffrey Simmons is also a phenomenal playmaker as well. Five and a half sacks, one forced fumble. He did miss some time this season dealing with an injury. Another thing that will hurt this team is the fact that Denico Autry is no longer with this team. He went to the Houston Texans and he played very good with this team on the defensive line. He was able to get to the quarterback. He was able to stop the run. So hopefully they can find someone that can come in and they can replace that production. The linebackers with this team, I think that they're solid. They can be better. And you look at this secondary. Roger McCreary was the best, and I mean the best cover corner with this team. You're bringing in Shadobia Wuzier, who was a solid cornerback. I think he can come in. He can give you some good plays here and there. He's not a true number one in terms of being with guys like Patrick Sertan, Jalen Ramsey. He's not a true number one cover corner, but he is better than what they have because you look at the last couple draft picks, they have not been able to work out. Caleb Farley has not been a good cornerback with this team. Christian Fulton has not been a good cornerback with this team. So bringing in a guy like Chadobia Wuzier will definitely help out this secondary as a whole. I like what the Tennessee Titans are building, and I'm not saying that the Tennessee Titans are going to go out there and be a major playoff threat, but you never know with this division that they're in. Just a couple of years ago, this team was 7-3, and three, and they dealt with all those injuries to Ryan Tannenhill, and the wheels just fell off. The wheels fell off the train. And since they made that trade to trade away A.J. Brown, they've been stuck in purgatory, it seems like. I like what the Tennessee Titans have. I like Will Levis a lot. Continue to build that offensive line and give this kid a fighting chance. And there are going to be some growing pains with Will Levis. Because this is still a very young football player. He's entering year two. And he did not play all of his rookie season. Ryan Tannehill played a couple of games. Then they gave Malik Willis some snaps in that fourth quarter for when Ryan Tannehill went down. So Will Levis was not even supposed to be the starting quarterback with this team. He was really supposed to be the third string quarterback and learn a couple of things from a guy like Ryan Tannehill. But instead, they put him in the fire and the offense did look better. The offense production went up. And he did that with basically just DeAndre Hopkins and Nick westbrook Akine. You give this kid a fighting chance, build that offensive line, you put more playmakers around him, you put him into a situation to where he can work off play action and he can, can deliver the football to the star tight end and to, and to DeAndre Hopkins with Coach Callahan being the head coach, with him coming over from Cincinnati Bengals, doing excellent work with Joe Burrow, doing excellent work with Jake Browning. I think Tennessee Titans are building something special. But let me know in the comment section below, how do you guys feel about Tennessee Titans so far? And are they a realistic threat in the AFC South Division? If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, Wayne, each and every last Wayne guys, stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. God bless. Peace.